Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video, I'm looking to retest P.E.K.K.A.'s version of the Starship and Super Heavy. And we are trying to launch 100 tons to orbit while reserving fuel in both Super Heavy and Starship for their return. And also, I'm going to attempt the actual return of Super Heavy, though not with the chopstick catch. We just want it to land somewhere close, <laughs> basically, uh, for now. And uh, that will demonstrate that it has enough fuel for landing. And then I'm going to have to still work on the re-entry for Starship. That's much more difficult. So there is one caveat, which is why we're starting here instead of with the launch. And that is that I had to go into FAR and turn off allow aerostructural failures. The reason for this is because otherwise with Super Heavy, its engines get ripped off by FAR. And it's as simple as that. And with Falcon 9, there was a retro burn ahead of the landing burn. There was a braking burn. And that prevented the aerodynamic failures of the engines on Falcon 9. So when I did the return of the Falcon 9 core, that was, you know, not necessary. It wasn't necessary to turn that off. However, Super Heavy, as far as I know, does not do that braking burn. And so it breaks. <laughs> it breaks up. So... I have to turn that off. Uh, I have tried using numbers, you know, increasing the impact tolerance, increasing this, changing that. None of that works for saving the engines of Super Heavy and preventing it from... Uh, the engines, when they're ripped off, end up killing the tank as well. So, yeah, that is a caveat, but otherwise, let us proceed. Okay, the... Uh whole structure is a little bit wobbly sometimes. It's very heavy, and it's got launch clamps trying to hold it down, six of them, but sometimes it wobbles a bit. Okay, so we are going to actually do the super heavy return test first, and then demonstrate that Starship can continue on to orbit with the same launch trajectory and with the same timing for the reserve. Now, the timing in the script is dependent on the timing for their intended trajectory during the test, and that's not necessarily correct for the situation where they would be carrying 100 tons. So there is that caveat. So it's matching the timing in the test launch because that was published, and that may or may not be correct. It does require us to throw down somewhat with Super Heavy, which isn't necessarily efficient. But then again, depending on how many engines you lose, it might be realistic. So anyway, run Starship. And when I press P, it activates the atmospheric output. So I have to press P again. And initially, when we run the Starship launch script, it has SAS on until it clears the tower. <laughs> Oh, it didn't work. The goal of that was to prevent it from having the engine smash into the side of it. Uh, it's something to do with the wiggliness. I don't know. I don't quite get it. It's a little bit tight in there. So we'll have to revert and try that again. And hopefully it won't crash into those. Maybe we need to have Pekka loosen up the colliders on that thing. So yeah, only until it clears the tower we have SAS on, and that generally helps, but didn't that time. So we'll see. Let's try it again. Run Starship. No. No, turn that off. Okay. And I don't know how to write a script that automatically goes from the Starship to the Super Heavy. I have to do Super Heavy separately like this. Okay, now we're clean. And there you go, SAS is off. In this latest version, the mass of Starship and Super Heavy have been adjusted to account for the fact that there are residuals in this version of KSP. Pekka had originally tested all this in KSP 1.8.1, so somewhat different results there. But it seems like this can carry the 100 tons to orbit. Uh, as far as 150 tons and stuff like that, I don't see it. Maybe with the 9-engine version, not with 6-engine uh, Starship. Alright, we should be passing Max-Q here. Okay, 
get that ready. We'll only activate that after the decoupling. You'll have to ignore the timing up there. Uh, because it was wiggly on the pad, it started to clock early. Okay. Alright, starting the script on Super Heavy. Though I generally stay with Starship until it lights. Otherwise it won't light. And Super Heavy turning around. Now consistency is a bit of a problem right now. We'll see how this goes. Okay, and part way through this burn it switches off the outer ring of gimbling engines so that it's more accurate at the end. And that's that. Turning back around. So it will only do one more burn and that's the landing burn. Okay, back below 100 kilometers. I only recently added far to these. I'll hand that over to Pekka, that fix. Essentially, on the way up, they're just acting like big wing pieces sitting out there. They're not acting like they have gaps in, so it's a lot of drag going up. But it's worth it coming back down. We really want the drag coming back down. So, um, yeah, basically, I took the hit on the drag going up in favor of having the drag coming back down. Getting hot around here, and G-forces will build up. I don't particularly want to actually land on the landing pad, because it'll just collide and make a mess and everything. Okay, it started slowing down. May still a touch too early. The equations just don't quite work out exactly right. But it can throttle, so there's that. These be there's all sorts of buildings around here. I have it go straight up and down once the horizontal speed is a certain amount. Ah, oh, we lost the engines. We need landing legs is the problem. We basically lost all the engines. It was pretty soft though. Um, and the last bit probably doesn't matter. That's probably because we actually stopped. And uh, so the throttling equation doesn't really matter at that point. There is no time to impact there. But not exactly the way I wanted it to stop. But let me try the launch up to orbit first. I mean, you can see how it's working. They'll, there's some tweaking will need to be made. We're 558 meters from the pad there. Uh, I could get it closer, but then, you know, then we need to worry about the chopstick catch. So we'll think about that. Uh, we could, of course, increase the engine impact tolerance back to what it was earlier. Right now it's down uh, to a lower level because I reduced it manually and with a higher impact tolerance to be able to stand. We actually had that during live streams. I had a huge impact tolerance on them and so it would just stay there with all the engines on because they were happy being landed upon but right now I've uh, tweaked that down for legitimacy's sake but then we really need landing legs so it's it's troubles or actually being caught by the chopsticks. But you can appreciate, you know, we're here. It's solid. Anyway, let me revert this and let's go for launch to orbit. Pekka has said that he will release the mod soon. Well, it's close, but we're clear. 
but yeah, maybe some adjustment to that. I mean, uh, if you were piloting it with like Smart ESS or yourself, or with just SAS control, um, it'd be fine. Uh, it's just that KOS is compensating for some wiggle in the pad, basically, and that's what throws it off and knocks it against the side of the orbital launch mount. Definitely past the speed of sound, and max Q wise, I probably am not catching it in time. Yeah, we are definitely past, but uh, yeah, somewhere back there was max Q. Okay, Super Heavy's out. Okay, we are continuing to orbit with our 100 tons. Delta V wise, we look good right now, but we've got a ways to go. Okay, the sea level engines are out. Or the gimbling engines, I should say, I guess. Okay, and that's that. Oh, how did it get that P? Anyway, all right. So we have 604 meters per second with the payload inside. No, 256 tons. Little rotation and. Good. Don't bump it, don't bump it. All right. And 156 tons, so that was 100 tons, and we have 1,045 meters per second left. Now, whether that's enough to, uh, certainly it's enough to deorbit. Whether it's, that's enough to land, I think it is, but the whole landing process without exploding needs some work. So that I will work on and do a subsequent video on. Let's try the super heavy landing one more time with a few adjustments and see if my adjustments made any difference. Okay, we are clean. Max Q... right there, 10,500 meters. Okay. Alright, that's on. Starship's away. Now right now we're not using the RCS to do any adjustments at all. And that can be added in. If it seems necessary. Right now the RCS is only being used for rotation. not like translational adjustments like after this burn we could have it push forward or back to fine-tune it or, or on landing we could sort of try to have the RCS attempt to kill horizontal speed right now we are not doing that Having it thrall down during the very end there would also maybe very slightly help because, you know, it depends if it's shutting down like a little bit, like a fraction of a second because of physics tick later than it ought to, then that could explain why we're overshooting a little bit. I've sort of tried to compensate for that with the edits, uh, tell it to bring it in a little bit instead of going so close to the KSC buildings. We'll see. Of course, there's a whole other thing where it has to overshoot somewhat in order to account for drag, right? Okay, we are coming in here. Right about here is where it rips off the engines if you don't have the aerodynamic stress turned off. Oh, 
Oh god, is it gonna like land on top of the VAB or something? Oh, that was a pause. Oh, that was because the pad is uh, was rendering. Okay, not on top of the VAB. Close though. Ow. It's just a little bit hard right now. Just a little bit hard. Um, now I'll fine tune that. We'll we'll get better at it. Um, but but it's getting here, you know. Yeah. All right. So anyway, that is the progress being made with Pekka's Starship and Super Heavy. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.